I don't know what happened in my previous video with the sound quality. I apologize for that, but I wasn't going to re-record it because I thought it was adequate. Uh, all you had to do was turn up a little bit on the volume on your TV. I know I did. I apologize for that. Uh, before I get into <laughs> more, more on the Russian-Ukraine war, watching the world burn, baby, watching the world burn. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. It's Christmas time, right? We we need to be happy, and and that's why you know I, I watch these other channels, and they want to say, oh, you know, we're gonna do a Christmas special. No, people, I'm not doing a Christmas special. So, so today we heard the final arguments in the Kerry Lake case. Uh, I pretty. I mean, it's it's devastating. I mean, if if this judge rules against uh, the shenanigans that took place uh, in the Maricopa County uh, election, I, 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 I that's it. I mean, we're we're done as a country. I mean, there, there's no there's just no hope for election integrity. I mean, I've never seen such amazing evidence that was provided as far as like everything that took place i mean i, I you know i, I got to be careful here on youtube i mean you know you watch it for yourself i mean i i i was just i would i was like holy moly <laughs> it was it was insane i mean i was like oh my god i mean we we all knew that there was a lot of crazy stuff that took place in maricopa county man i tell you what the democrats are desperate I mean, they are desperate, and uh, what they did, what they pulled off in, in Maricopa County was just evil, total evil. But anyway, so let's get back to the Ukraine war, and uh, this is the Duran, and I've encouraged you to watch them on uh, YouTube, or you can watch them on uh, uh, Rumble. This is on Rumble, by the way, and, uh, and so this is... This is uh, I, I, I've been I've been trying to explain this to you, okay? You know, we are not on a total, well, I mean, we are and we aren't. We're not on a total war footing here in the United States. We haven't converted our auto uh, industry into making tanks. We have not converted uh, everything. We, you know, basically, you know, we would have to take the whole damn country. And by, by the way, we can't afford it. We're 31 trillion dollars in debt and now not just spent another 1.7 trillion dollars on you know uh helping salmon you know or or, or investigating mice i mean <laughs> if you looked at what's in that bill oh my god it's so ridiculous but russia russia's gone to total war i want you to understand that Okay, this this is World War Three. Uh, uh, well, the way Russia feels about it, and so I'm going to let you listen to the Duran for just a few minutes. I don't want to steal from their parade. You need to watch them on Rumble or YouTube, and so let's just let's just hear what they got to say. I mean, the pace of decision making in Moscow here is has been intense. So we had a. On the 21st of December, we had first a national a Security Council meeting. This is the top political leadership of Russia. Then we had this colossal meeting of the board or collegium of the Russian Ministry of Defense. That's the entire Russian military leadership. Now, I want you to understand, okay? You know, in Russia, everybody says, oh, Putin's on the hooks. I mean, you know, they're going to overthrow him, uh, you know. No, no. I mean, this is like every U.S. general meeting in a conference to, to basically lay out the future of the war. I mean, think about it. I mean, you know, if, if we didn't have Millie and Austin, these traitors that would exist in the U.S., you know, uh, that are advising Biden, uh, all right, you know, whatever. No, no, we're, we're talking about every Russian general, every colonel, probably, you know, in down in their, in their military ranks, hundreds of them meeting together, listen up and get edumacated. 15,000 people apparently were involved at uh, various levels. We had reports from Putin 
we've had reports from the defense minister Sergei Shoigu the following day 16,000 military officers just met together and unanimously have declared war on Ukraine can we do that in the United States? I doubt it. We had 51, uh, let's see, 51 intelligence officers that said that the Hunter Biden laptop was, uh, wasn't real. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These, these are the people that we want to listen to. I mean, think about this. This is, this is a country going to war. Do you understand that? You had uh, uh, a report from the... Chief of the Russian General Staff, Valery Gerasimov, he briefed foreign, minister, uh, foreign military attaches in Moscow. And we've had another press conference from Putin. And you can put this all together and a number of things come across. Putin says, again, he said this now several times, that the West's objective is to destroy Russia, to dismember it. That Russia, therefore, is in a state of confrontation with the West. This is going to be an enduring and long-lasting one. And the Russians, therefore, have been pushed into a position where they have no choice but to remilitarize. And this is going to be a military build-up on an enormous scale. Um, another... It's not a military build-up on an enormous scale that has not already taken place. Okay, I want you to understand, if you go back, they were already doing this. This, this is beyond imagination. I, I have never seen, well, you have to understand, if you look back in history at World War II, you know, when the, when the, when the Russians were churning out T-72 tanks, you know, every second on the line, I mean, you know, uh, artillery rounds, everything, I mean, this, this is the most massive military buildup in the history of the world. And Biden, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, you've got, uh, let's see, uh, who, who was the Roman emperor that, that rang the fiddle? You know, he's, he's playing his fiddle. And you got Congress going, oh, Zelensky. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. Oh, hell no. Oh, my God. I mean, this is what's going on, people. Let's listen. Half a million men joining the Russian army. Uh, Ten motorized. That's that's conservative. Actually, the estimates that I've heard are seven hundred and fifty thousand, and another million getting called up. So where are the where are the call ups in the United States? Are, is NATO going to war? I haven't heard about uh, Germany. I haven't heard about Pol well, Poland's all in. Uh, I haven't heard about Britain. I mean, where are the million men call ups? across the western uh, countries Russia's all in baby you better you just better watch Ukraine they're gonna get eviscerated full divisions being created this is you know, three are completely new seven will be developed out of uh, brigades there's going to be more emphasis on strategic weapons more emphasis on the Air Force but the priority is now going to be the ground forces. So as I said, 10 motorized infantry divisions, uh, two new military districts in Moscow and in the Leningrad region, that's the area that surrounds St. Petersburg. A new army corps to be created opposite Finland in Karelia. Um, uh, Wanted to clue in right there. Finland, uh, by the way, I just... Uh, I don't know if they've joined NATO or they were talking about it. Uh, and by the way, Finland has a huge military force. Um, but so Russia's, they're ready. They're ready to take them on. And that's what he's talking about right here. And I wanted to, to give you the context of the situation. I mean, this is beyond imagination. And yet your media won't even report on any of this stuff. You won't hear about this. Oh, we're winning the war. Ukraine is winning the war. You know, I hope to goodness gracious that, you know, people after the, all this chaos, uh, well, assuming we all survive, you know, if we don't go to thermonuclear war, you know, that they'll look back and say, you know, wow, we were being lied to <laughs> you know, about everything. But listen. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, the beefing up of uh, Russian tank divisions and, you know, tank forces, and this wasn't fully spelled out. Um, a massive expansion of the Russian army, two more air assault divisions. Now, the Soviet Union had seven paratroop divisions. Russia is now going to have six, but supplementing those six paratroop divisions, there's going to be all kinds of um, independent air mobile brigades and all that kind of same thing. So ultimately, Russia's airborne forces will probably outnumber those which the Soviet Union deployed. And five naval infantry. Think about that. Think about that. The Soviet Union basically occupied almost half the world and the Warsaw Pact. I mean, that's the, that's the Soviet Union. We're looking at numbers beyond that. This is what, this is why, you know, I went a bit crazy with my wife. She wanted to support Biden. She wanted to support the Democrats. This is what they brought us to. This is, this is total war, baby. This is total war. I hope you understand it. This is what your vote does. This is why you, as an American citizen, have to pay attention to what's going on in the world. And guess what? Merry freaking Christmas. Divisions replacing naval infantry brigades. And the other thing was an enormous increase in Russian military production. And Putin is talking about the fact that military production increased very significantly in 2022, but that it's going to increase by orders of magnitude in 2023 and beyond. And he said, we have the financial resources to do it. Our economy is in good shape. I want to add to that. Okay, you wonder where those financial resources are coming from. Most of the world is supporting Russia. You got India, you got China. They're buying up all of, I mean, Russia is rich in natural resources. They're buying up all of those natural resources. They are funding the war. Russia has no problem paying for everything. I hope you understand that. Of course, in the, in the meantime, with the West, we've depleted uh, Western Europe. They're going to have uh, energy blackouts. Uh, the, you know, here in the United States, we're going to face ever increasing uh, uh, energy prices, uh, food prices. Uh, you know, a lot of the uh, agriculture uh, fertilizer comes out of uh, Ukraine. Uh, so your your food prices are going to go astronomical here in the United States. Russia's in Russia is in the driver's seat, and listen to what they're doing, baby. Oh my goodness gracious! I I watching the world burn. We're fully capable of doing this. We don't need to do what the Soviet Union did, which is militarize our entire society and militarize our entire economy because we have the resources, we have the factories, we have the scientists, we have the engineers, we have the laboratories, mm. we have all of Okay, I want to go back in history just a little bit. Uh, just to tell you how resilient the Russian people are, I mean, uh, back during World War II, the, they actually picked up the factories <laughs> when the Germans were coming across the border in World War II and moved them. I mean, entire factories. This is the resilience of the Russian people. I mean, these are some hardcore, uh, I mean, uh, anyway, this is where we are. You poke the bear, you poke the bear, you poke the bear, and guess what? See, this is, this is the war that the United States wasn't prepared for. Yeah, we fought Iraq. Yeah, we blew up Libya. Yeah, we fought Syria. Yeah, we've been in Vietnam. Yeah, we've done everything. Now you have poked the bear. God help us. These things, and we have the production facilities going as well. So, the West is now in an arms race in Europe. It's going to face uh, a Russian military juggernaut, which is heading its direction, because that's been absolutely 
clear what's coming and it's going to squash Ukraine in its path. Right. Um, yeah, so uh, there's going to be a war between NATO and Russia. That's well, going to happen. well, this Maybe is this after is what Ukraine. Who knows yeah. how long after Ukraine? So the question becomes, are we going to sue for peace as this juggernaut crushes Ukraine or, uh, or are we going to watch Russia? Well, I mean, Finland's got, I mean, you know, Finland's been preparing for war for quite some time. I mean, they've got uh, pretty good uh, military forces because uh, they, they, they have uh, gone up against Russia in the past. Um, I'm sure they'll do very well. I don't know. I mean, this is a total mobilization. I'm just saying, watching the world burn. Peace out. Stay free. Good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free state of Florida.